Hey guys, I wanted to make a short video on the upcoming seminars that I have. We're doing modules one and two of the objective biomechanics seminar line in Split Croatia in the end of June to the, to the beginning of, to, I think, to the 2nd of, of July. These seminars are going to tackle most typical MSK issues. So it's a lot of information. I think we have like what guys, like 200 slides in four days, pretty extensive stuff. We're going to be talking about differential diagnosis, low back pain. We're going to be talking about general cause of hip pain, SIJ dysfunction, which is not so common guys. It, I don't even know why I have it in the seminar, maybe because it's so misunderstood. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the real indications of SI joint disorder and how to distinguish it from the fake mimickers or the mimicking disorders, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about typical hip problems, so um, uh, trochanteric bursitis, we're going to talk about hip impingement, we're going to talk about femoral acetabular glide syndrome, we're going to talk about iliopsoas and iliopectineal bursitis. Uh, in the knee, we're going to be talking about patellofemoral pain syndrome, obviously, how do you detect that, how to distinguish it from other things. IT band syndrome, um, general techniques for, for ligamentous, uh, ligamentous dysfunction, which I think with the ligamentous stuff most of you probably know already, but we're going to cover it anyway. We're going to talk about diagnosis and treatment and treatment that works, guys. Treatment that works for uh, jumper's knee, okay? And the various things we're going to cover. Now, I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to the low back, the low back um, um, section of the, of the first seminar. Low back pain can be difficult to treat because there's no good consensus on what causes it. And that's a pretty big first, first obstacle. And then people who, yeah, people who come in with low back pain, they often have very different types of complaints, guys. We have to get specific. I always talk about the three W's, exactly where are the symptoms, what kind of pain is it, and exactly which movement will reproduce their symptoms. That will give you some good clues on where to start and which differential diagnosis that you should consider. Now, what if you have a patient that says that you have pain right in the spine, right down here, right in the center of the spine? Hurts with bending forward, hurts with bending back, stiff in the morning, gets better with movement. What does it sound like? Well, just based on the exact location, you can be pretty sure that this is most likely a spine problem. Does the location of the symptoms suggest a QL problem, for example? Not really, right? You can just, you can just include, exclude differential diagnoses based on exactly where the symptoms are. And then they say flexion extension triggers it. Okay, that's another thing, that's another element that would substantiate the notion of th that this is most likely some kind of spine problem. All right. What if they say, okay, those are the symptoms that you have, and then two, three times per year, they have, they, they, they throw their backs out, and now it also radiates down their thigh. Now, you know, you can be pretty sure that they're having some kind of chronic disc problem. You can check their strength. If there's weakness in the leg, you might have to do an MRI to see what the status is. If there's no weakness in the leg, you can ask them, well, do you usually feel weak in the leg when you throw your back out? They might say yes, they might say no. Either, ca either case, guys, either way, if there's no current weakness, there's no yellow or red flag per se that would warrant imaging, but there, this, is an, this depends a little bit. We're going to get back to that in the seminar. Now, what, is th what if the patient says that they have this chronic, very painful pain here at the posterior lateral floor? post your flank. Okay, so we know where the location is, what movements will trigger it? Well, they say, especially side bending and side bending with flexion. So side bending to the opposite side. You ask them, does it hurt to bend to the same side? No. Opposite side? Yes. Does the pain spread out? Not really. Worse after training? Yes. This is most likely a QL problem, guys. QL is pretty easy to diagnose just based on the on the actual location of the symptoms and it's just a simple test you go into the ql now the ql is not back here like a lot of people think let me tighten up my t-shirt so you can see that 
it's not back here. If you want to get to the QL, you don't push here. You push in here, guys, at the flank, and you go way in there. And you ask them, if it hurts, you ask them, does that reproduce your exact symptom? If they say yes, well, behold, you have the diagnosis. This is a QL myalgia. If it does not reproduce the symptoms, guys, if they say, no, well, it hurts, but that's another pain. That's not my real pain. Or if it doesn't hurt, well, then, okay, you found some, well, if it hurts, then you found something, but it's not what you're looking for. And if it doesn't hurt, then you're, there is nothing there. Does that make sense? That's how an easy protocol on how to include, exclude for the QL. A lot of patients also talk about SI pain. And SI pain, guys, is wildly, wildly overdiagnosed. Wildly overdiagnosed. Now, some of you might hear this and say, no way. Well, you know, we can agree to disagree, guys. Why am I saying that? In my experience, people who really get as true SI joint pain, the joint, not area, not area, joint pain are either patients who have some kind of autoimmune disorder, for example, ankylosing spondylitis, they can get that, rheumatic arthritis, or patients who have a very rotational, very unilateral sport. So let's say handball players, golfers, javelin throwers, quite susceptible to get this. But like the average low back pain patient, guys, no, no. In my experience, absolutely not. Now there's a good test for this called the 14 fingers test. I think it's Frost 2002 or something like that. 14 Frost, I'm not exactly sure. Either way, it's a 14 finger test, you can Google it. And it's very, it's very simple. At least two times in a row, or preferably more, the patient should be able to point exactly, exactly, exactly in that SI joint fossa when they are told to point where it hurts. It should not deviate outside of the joint. If it deviates outside of the joint, or if there, you know, if if one time it's in the joint, another time it's L5, another time it's like upper performance area, that's not the SI joint, guys. That that's that's a mimic. That's a mimic. Now, if they do point in the exact joint, now we have several tests to kind of substantiate that. You have the thigh thrust and the different things that you can do that we're going to go through in the seminar to truly include or exclude if this could be an SI joint problem. Now, if it is an SI joint problem, then we have treatment strategies for that. But if it's not, though, then you're going to waste your time if you're not aware of that and waste the patient's time as well, right? What are common mimics of SI joint problem? Well, L5-S1 disc issue, of course, very close to that SI joint fossa. Triggers will be a little bit different. Symptoms could be different. Another thing that is almost never talked about, guys, is middle colonial neuralgia. The middle colonial nerve passes through that SI joint area, innervates the SI joint, and also passes down to the, to the intermediate segment of, of the buttock. Extremely common cause of SI joint problems. Well, SI joint pain mimics. Okay, guys? So if you have a patient who, uh, let's say, they point around the SI joint area, they, they don't seem to have any pain in the back, they can do flexion extension, no problem. Uh, they can walk, no problem, but they say that after a lot of activity, or maybe even at night, it really, really hurts in that SI joint area, or even when they sit, middle colonial nerve. Now, where does middle colonial nerve come, come from, guys? Comes from the sacral plexus, S1, 2, 3. Treatment? <laughs> it's technically a symptom of piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome causes sacral plexus symptoms, okay? So, if you try to treat that patient for SI joint pain, not going to work. If you try to treat them for lumbar issues, not going to work. So we need to do the differential, the workup for differential diagnosis, find the right diagnosis, and then we determine treatment. I hope that makes sense. Hope that this little uh, intro was informative and interesting to you. I hope it was. Uh, if you are interested in the seminar, there are, well, I have, I have recorded it, but I have not published it yet. So it's possible to pre-order the online access, access to these seminars. Um, and you're, of course, very welcome to join us in Split Croatia now in the end of June, if, uh, if you want to. So, without further ado, I uh, wish you a great day, and thank you for watching.